Okay, hello and welcome everyone. In this video, I am going to do some profit maximization exercises of the variety found in, in Varian. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with a production technology. So X1 and X2 are gonna be the amount of inputs. So input, input one, input two, and then two times the square root of X1 plus X2 is gonna be the well, for a given x amount of x1 and for a given amount of input 2, for a given amount of input 1, for a given amount of input 2, this will kick out my output. This bar over the top means that we're in the short run world because I'm going to be fixing my use of input 2. And I'm saying, okay, p is equal to 80. p is my output price. This is the price of the output good in its market. Omega is going to be the price of input 1. Omega 1 is going to be the price of input 1. Omega 2 is going to be the price of input 2. So 20 for input 1, 16 for input 2. And then we're fixing the level of input 2 at 8. We want to find x, x1. We want to find the optimal use of good or of input 1. So I'm going to write down the firm's profit maximization problem. It's going to be P times technology minus omega 1 omega or times x1 minus omega 2 times x2. This right here is going to be the amount of output times the price. You should recognize that as revenue. And then this right here, these omegas, omega times x for good for input one and omega two x two for good two, these are going to be my costs. This is the, this is my expenditure on input one. Here's my expenditure on input two. Okay, so how do we solve the firm's problem? Well, we're gonna take partial derivatives with respect to my choice variables. So I'm gonna, first I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drop in my production technology and I'm gonna replace the input prices that I have. And so I say this looks complicated, but let's just build, a, build our first order condition. It's gonna be PMP1 equals omega one. How do we know that? Well, take a look at this thing. Let's take the partial with respect to, well, let's even just look at this one. Let's take the partial with respect to input one. What's gonna happen? It's gonna be P F prime minus omega one. This drops out, that's a constant with respect to uh, choice one. And then we're only gonna have one first order condition because we actually only have one choice variable because I fixed the level of input two at eight. So I'm just gonna skip down and like build from my first order condition P M P one is equal to omega one. I'm going to drop in this 80 that is given above. I'm going to drop in this 20 right here. And then I'm going to evaluate the marginal product with respect to input one. So let's differentiate this thing. This is going to be what one half times two X one to the minus one half. Sure enough. So a lot of these things are, this is going to clean up. This is just going to be what 80, uh, 80 times x1 to the minus 1 half equals 20 and then solving for x1 so moving let's see moving this 80 over gives me 1 fourth on this side nope I don't want to do that because I have to deal with this stupid exponent so here I have 1 over x1 to the 1 half power or uh, because this is a negative exponent so then I'm going to kind of cross multiply to bring, see I have this note here, to bring x1 into the numerator and then divide through by, um, or divide through to get uh, four equals uh, x1 to the one half. And then just uh, squaring both sides, we have my optimal choice for input x or input one. Okay, so let me try another one. This one looks super complicated. <laughs> it's actually not any harder than the previous one. So here's my firm's profit maximization statement and suppose I have four inputs here's omega 1 times my use of input 1 omega 2 times my use of input 2 omega 3 times my input use of input 3 omega 4 times my use of input 4 and let's just assume that my output is going to be given by the following production technology so it's going to be 163 x1 minus 2 times uh, x1 to the x1 squared and so so first off, my use of all these other inputs are fixed. Also, it's not entering into my production technology in the first place. So we're actually not going to use those. 
So they get ignored from the perspective of short run optimization. Given my input price, given my output price, we can solve really quickly. So P times P times Q minus w omega one X one is gonna be price times marginal product of input one is equal to omega one, or three times what, 163 X minus, uh, or 163 minus four X. And then this is just solving for X. So divide both sides by three gives me 163 minus four X equals three, and then subtracting, Moving around and subtracting, I get 40 is equal to x1. Okay, good. So exercise three, suppose my production technology is gonna be f of x is equal to, my output is equal to eight x to the one half. Suppose my output good is 40, or output price is, the market price of my output good is 40. The market, the input, the price of input one is eight, find x1. So I'm going to maximize profit by choosing my use of good one or good X. So price times F of X minus omega one times X. Take my first order condition. It's just going to be PMP one is equal to omega one. Substituting in the values that I have. Cool. And then solving for X. So I have 400 equals X one star. Okay, and the last one allows me to call attention to a place where people might make a little bit of a mistake. So suppose my production technology, f of x is equal to four times x to the one half. My output is sold for 80 in its, in its market. My input is costing me 20. Find my optimal level of x and find my optimal profits. So now in addition to finding the profit, maxima profit maximizing use of input one, we're also finding the actual profits. So here's my profit function. Here's my first order condition, P times F prime of X is equal to omega one. So PMP X equals omega. Substituting in, uh, so let's see. So substituting in, I think I had, maybe I lost a, did I give, uh, I gave myself an extra Give myself an extra uh, negative here. So this should actually just be 4x to the 1 half. So what I want here is 80 times, oh, what did I do? No, I had the I had an extra 4 is what I did because I've already taken the partial. Great. So, okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to have price times MP is equal to omega. So the price is 80. Cool, got that. What's the marginal product? Well, we have to take the partial of this thing with respect to x. So it's going to be one half times four, and then reduce the, uh, then reduce the power by one. So I'm going to have one half times four, reduce the power by one. Ah, oh, I'm such an idiot. Um, no, I'm just really, really tired. So, uh, right, and then. So then we're dividing through by 20. That's where this four is coming from. This two is coming from one half times four. And then I'm gonna solve this thing for x. This gives me an x of 64. Um, and right, so now what we wanna do is we wanna find profit. Here's the correct way to do this. We go back up to my profit my profit function, we say, oh, it's gonna be price times my technology minus my expenditure on my input. So it's my market price times my technology. So it's gonna be four times X to the one half. Well, that X was 64, so it's gonna be four times 64 to the one half minus 20 times 64. And if I do this, I'm gonna have 80 times 32 minus 1280 or 2560 minus 1280 or my profits are 1280. And that's what it ought to be. Now, suppose I had done something silly and I was trying to find my profits and I put in P times Q minus C times Q because sometimes people do this because we know profits is just revenue minus cost. So we'll, what if we just naively put in price times quantity minus cost times quantity? Cool. So suppose I go 80 times 64 minus 20 times 64. What's the problem? Well, the calculation is incorrectly assuming 
x is equal to 64. But x is the amount of input only. We send x through the production function to get q, then calculate the, calculate the profit. And so what's wrong? Well, we have forgotten here that we don't have an, a one-to-one -one relationship between our use of input and our output good. Right? So of course, that's going to be wrong. So what this is doing is I'm ju I just want to call attention because I've seen enough students do this. And so now that you've seen it and you kind of call attention to it and you see how ridiculous it is, you probably hopefully won't do it yourself. So very good. Um, right. And the last thing I want to do is exercise five, a Cobb Douglas problem. So suppose our production technology is Cobb Douglas. So we have um, or something of the Cobb Douglas form. So we have our technology is going to be x to the one half, x x one to the one half times x two to the three fourths, and assume x one, or assume x two is fixed at sixteen, and our output price is one. Our, in, our price of input one is two. Our price of input two is one. Find everything. Find my optimal use of my two inputs and my and how much output I get. So I say, okay, we're gonna get x2 star for free. It's fixed at 16. So I'm gonna drop that in actually. That simplifies this down substantially. So now I've got p times x1 to the 1 half, and then I'm gonna drop in 16 here. So I'm gonna take 16 to the, th to the 3 fourths. Minus two was my omega one times x1 minus w2 times x2. Dropping in my 16 and W2 is, or W2, omega 2 is just 1. Okay, and so now I'm going to go and I got to solve this thing for, I got to solve this thing for my optimal x1. That involves taking a partial with respect to x1. So I'm going to take that partial derivative, 1 half x1 to the minus 1 half times 16 to the 3 fourths is equal to 2. Why? Well, this is a constant that goes to 0, and then my differentiation leaves. Uh, 2 here, so but I want my first order condition, so I'm going to have this equals 2 because the, otherwise I'd have to take the partial set it equal to 0. I've just kind of made this look nice, kind of make it look like how we've been solving before. And now I'm going to move things around and solve for x1. So here, this is actually 1 over x to the half, so let's just multiply through by x to the half. That puts x to the half in the numerator on the right side of the equation. Divide through by 4, so that I'm going to have, what, 8 divided by 4, or 2, is equal to x to the 1 half. Square both sides, 4 equals x1. So I use 4 units of input 1. And then I'm going to plug this back in. I'm going to say, well, how much output am I going to be able to get? If I use 16 units of input, and if I of input 2, and I use 4 units of input 1. Well, it's going to be, my output is going to be 4 to the 1 half, times 16 to the 3 fourths, or 2 times 8, or 16. And then I say, well, what if the exponent on x was bigger than 1, on x on good 1 was bigger than 1, then we get increasing returns to scale and uh, not increasing at a decreasing rate, but increasing at an increasing rate, in which case we would get uh, my, use of, my use of input 1 would be really big. So, um, I'll, so basically what's... what's uh, what, Basically, what's happening is we'd say, uh, what if we had, what if we had an unusual situation where the where the prof the revenue side was increasing at a much much faster rate than the cost side. If this imp if this exponent was much larger than this exponent, then the revenue side of my profit maximization expression would be increasing faster than my cost side. <laughs> and that would have sort of some ridiculous implications, some of which I talk about here. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and conclude the video.